Ed C. Jones III, Senior Pastor here at Trinity United Methodist Church. I'm so grateful that you're worshiping with us. Please like, share, and invite others to worship with us today. If you are looking at us on Facebook or YouTube, please subscribe or follow our page to connect. If this is your first time joining us, I want to extend a large welcome to you. We know that you could have worshiped at any church in the world, but you chose to connect with us today. Trinity, show our guests some love by typing welcome in the chat. Uh, please take a moment to fill out the connection card using the button below so that we can connect with you. Next week, everybody, somebody type in the chat, next week. Next week, we start our in-person worship experience at 8 a.m. The new worship experience is called The Table. The Table is a place where we experience the love of God. The table is a place that we encounter God's grace. The table is a place that all are invited. Jesus Christ invites all to the table to encounter his love, his grace, his peace and power. Let's invite as many people as possible to the table next week at 8 a.m. It is so important that we Everyone knows that we will be exercising all the safety or precautions. Uh, we will have uh, uh, social distance seat seating. Uh, we encourage only those who are vaccinated to worship with us. We want to make sure that we provide a safe space. We want to make sure we also keep uh, our community in prayer. 
There's so much things going on in terms of the non-vaccinated uh, people who are amongst us, and uh, it's an alarming rate of people who are, uh, are getting COVID-19. So please, let's keep advocating for our family and friends who may be unvaccinated to be vaccinated. Uh, this upcoming Wednesday, we, we will commence a special Bible study for all of our leaders, our elected leaders, and those who desire to be in leadership. Uh, this is going to be a special time where we study some things because uh, this next season that the church is entering into, it's so important that we have laser strategy. I, I shared earlier in uh, this worship series, we're moving from playing checkers to chess. And this is going to be a Bible study to empower our leadership as we move forward. So we want to invite you. Uh, you'll see a link that pops up in the chat. If you're interested, uh, please sign up. Uh, for all of the leaders, I want to make sure uh, all of you got to be there. It's important that we get all of our leaders engaged in this particular study. I also want to make sure we have an opportunity to celebrate. The Trinity Preparatory Academy's board uh, through the, went through the process of interviewing many people who applied for the role of director of Trinity Prep, uh, Preparatory Academy. Their experience, their wisdoms, their prayer and discernment led them to select a new director to lead us in launching Trinity Preparatory Academy. The board chose Ms. Camelia Anderson, a native Houstonian of Houston with 25 years of experience in early learning childhood. Uh, development in a certified child care administrator. Uh, I just want to make sure that everybody know the Trinity Preparatory Academy plays a vital role in the future of Trinity United Methodist Church. The success of the school will rely on each and every one of us spreading the news about the school. We must make sure as many people know about this school as possible to ensure that we are successful. Successful. Please keep Ms. Anderson in uh, your prayers, uh, the future team leaders, the board, the students, and parents. Uh, they will play a very part in the, the legacy of Trinity United Methodist Church, and we definitely want to keep them covered in prayer. Uh, you'll see an image uh, that pops up in the chat. I want to make sure you know if you press that uh, image, you can share uh, that image on all of the platforms. And I just want to encourage you to help uh, us spread the word about Trinity Preparatory Academy. It's so important that we, we get behind it and we're moving toward the opening in the fall. Uh, we have a lot of things going on in church in preparation for it. So please keep us in your prayer. And I want to make sure you know without your faithful commitment, without your uh, kingdom mindedness, without your uh, ability to choose to keep God first in all what you do, your giving of tithes and offering empower the church to make bold moves for the kingdom. Uh, we want to make sure that we continue uh, to advance uh, the kingdom of God by serving uh, and impacting uh, the, 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 the community and uh, many of the things that's going around in our, in our uh, neighborhood. Uh, you will see some uh, uh, announce, uh, not announcements, some emails and those type of things going uh, forth to, to encourage you uh, to, to spread the word. We have a, a immunizations going on uh, at the end of the month, and we have uh, uh, some, some great opportunities for us to make sure that we support them with our tithes, offerings, and our giving. So thank you ahead of time for your choosing to empower uh, and liberate people with the love of Jesus Christ through your giving. Uh, we want to keep all those who are in on our prayer uh, list. Uh, it's, it's so important that 
we uh, pray for our sick and shut-ins and uh, those who may be in a season of grief, those who are uh, facing upward heroes, those who are experiencing victory. We know that prayer is the difference maker and I thank you all for praying for uh, Sylvia uh, as she go through this process but all of the others who are going through we want to make sure we, we pray for deliverance and healing uh, for all those who are surrounded by grief darkness or those who have experienced loss let us pray father we we give you honor we give you praise Father, we, 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 we celebrate in, in, in our, our honor that you are the great I am. Uh, the one who was, the one who is, and the one who is yet to come. Right now, Lord, we, we, we come to say thank you. Thank you for giving us day, this day. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to honor you, to celebrate who you are, to give you thanks, to give you praise. Thank you for it, uh, covering us. Thank you for advancing us. Thank you for providing for us. Father, we thank you because you've been so, so good to us. You've been so, so good to us. And you, you, you have outdone yourself because of the love that you have provided for us. Oh Lord, you saw fit to shower us with your grace and mercy, even when we turned our backs against you, even when we uh, didn't want to do right, even when we chose to overlook you, even when we chose to uh, put you in a lower position in our life. Our greed, our pride, our egos. Father, we, we confess. We, we, we failed. We, we are uh, short of your glory. And right now, Lord, we come before you asking for forgiveness. Heal us, Lord. Empower us. We come before you, uh, you on behalf of all of those who are sick. Father, we pray for the healing. We pray for their restoration, their endurance, their, their bodies, their oxygen, their pain, their grief. Father, may the Holy Spirit hover and cover over them. Move through all the medical professionals. Move through the mighty uh, uh, care of the, the nurses, the, 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 those, those who are, are advocating for their safety and for their healing. Father, we ask that your grace flow through them. Uh, Father, we pray a hedge of protection around each and every person online with us now. Protect them, Lord. Guard their uh, immune systems. Guard over their mind, body, and spirits. Give them the unction to believe that you are with them now and forevermore. Father, we pray for the preacher for the hour. Guide her words. Guide her thoughts. Empower them to transform our hearts to bend toward you, O oh Lord, to hear your voice, to follow your will and your way. Father, we lift this prayer in the name that's above all names, the name of Jesus Christ. In his precious name we pray. Amen. Good morning, Trinity. Blessings unto all of you. I am grateful to come to you today with a word from the Lord. You know, we have been in a sermon series entitled Go, uh, coming from our foundational scripture in Matthew. Matthew starting with verses 18 going through 20. And today I have the privilege of culminating the ending of this sermon series. So will you go with me to the word of God? Let's look at the gospel of John, John 7 37 through 38, and it reads, On the last and greatest day of the festival, Jesus stood and said in a loud voice, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. If you have your, what I call, working Bibles, I want you to underline the word anyone. Let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as scripture has said, rivers of living water will flow from within them. 
Let me give you a little background on this scripture. Jesus was attending the last day of the Feast of Tabernacles. There was a large crowd gathered, and he used it as a last attempt to appeal to the lost or to invite them to Christ. If someone didn't respond, at least they would leave with the invitation on their mind. Because if he didn't see them again, he wanted to ensure that they had been extended the invitation. Another feast would not be held until months later, and he didn't want to take the chance that someone might die, perish, without hearing the gospel. Now the scripture says, Jesus stood and cried out, which lets me know he didn't just casually say, hey, y'all okay? Everybody good? You need anything? But he strongly shouted with urgency and emotion, hey, I'm offering something. I have something. I know something that will not only change the way you feel or your situation, but it will change your life. He wasn't only speaking with his mouth, he was speaking with his heart. Jesus offered them living water. He invited them to drink from a well that, would never, that they would never thirst again. Let us pray. Lord, we just thank you so much for this opportunity to be under the sound of the Spirit. Lord, to hear the preceding word of our Creator, of Elohim, and of our Father. Lord, we thank you for the word, the unadulterated, uncompromised word of God that leads us into all truth, that gives us the truth that we would not perish. But, Father, have life now and have life eternally. God, I thank you for those that are in the sound of my voice, God. These are your creations, your children, God. May all that I say, may all that I do, Lord God, speak to their hearts, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Water is referenced 722 times in the scripture. The first mention of water in scripture is found in Genesis chapter 1, verses 2. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And the last mention is found in Revelation 22, verses 7, verse 17. And the Spirit and the bride said, come. And let who he hears say, come. And let him who thirsts come. Whoever desires, let him take the water of life freely. Think about it. Everything we eat, we drink, or even use is made with water. The human body is more than 60% water. Blood is 92% water. The brain and the muscles are 75% water. And bones are about 22% water. No matter how much we like or don't like it, we simply can't live without it naturally or spiritually. See, nothing naturally can be made without it, and nothing spiritually was made without it. Yet both naturally and spiritually, it is complete and sufficient alone. Naturally and spiritually, water was here before man was created, and it will be here after man is gone. Both components are used to give life, better life, sustain life, Water is connected to everything around us. Water. It's a phenomenon in its own right. It is still the only thing that you can get free and its benefits priceless. However, no matter how they market or distribute smart water, life water, spring water, Mountain water, filtered water, or tap water, 
It is true to what it is, and it is vital to the process, development, and maintenance of life. See, we can delay our thirst for it, but we cannot deny our need for it. No matter where we are or what state we find ourselves in, the need for water naturally or spiritually will never change. Even the makers of Dasani water knew this by their branding. You can't live without it. You know, Jesus had his own branding too when he said in John eleven twenty five, 25, I am the resurrection and the source of all life. Those who believe in me will live even in debt. Side note, Jesus was doing PR work before it became popular. Like some others, I don't find water to be the most flavorful. I have made all kinds of promises to drink or consume more water. I remember telling myself, you know how we do, we tell ourselves stories that only we can believe to support or give validity to our choices. Well, it was at a time I was working long hours and telling myself that I didn't have time to drink water. I know, I know. Then it happened that I got this new position and my cubicle happened to house the water cooler from my cubicle and two others. Now imagine this, the water cooler is sitting approximately seven feet away from the middle of my desk. All I had to do was roll my chair, fill my cup, and roll back to my desk. Well, saints, I didn't drink much water then, and I was there for three years. Imagine the water that would satisfy, wash, cleanse, purify, relieve, refresh, heal, soothe, and save was only a chair roll away. Again, I delayed its consumption, but my need for it never changed. It is only in our consumption that we ever know the benefits of water. As long as the water stays on the outside of our body, it's no good to us. In other words, we must have an internal experience with the substance. Amazingly, there is only one portal for water, naturally or spiritually. That is, through the mouth. We drink water via our mouth, and we confess living water with our mouth. Romans 10, 9, 10 says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. The best testaments of water and its benefits are by mouth and word of mouth. You can testify or witness to its effectiveness or goodness because you have tried it. You have experienced the benefits. You know it washes. You know it cleanses. You know it refreshes. You know it heals. You know it will even save. See, there's no better testament for water than a personal one. Have you ever thought about how plentiful natural water is? I mean, think about it. You can get it at home. You can access it on your job. You can purchase it at a grocery or convenience store. It's available for consumption at eating eatery or restaurant. Yet the number of people diagnosed with dehydration or a lack of water is astounding kind of reminds you of the Bible. You know, that book that tells of the living water, it's in our homes, vehicles, office drawers, on coffee tables, in purses, backpacks, briefcases, stores, on the internet, on phones, iPads, computers, and even in hotel rooms. Yet people 
are spiritually hydrated. Dehydration. It's from the Greek word hydor, or water, and the Latin prefix D, indicating deprivation, removal, and separation. It is the deprivation or removal or separation from water. See, you don't need to go far to see the effects of dehydration in the world. Almost all the people we see and meet daily are dehydrated. Statistically, 75% of Americans are chronically dehydrated. How can people be suffering from the lack of something that is free, plentiful, and readily available? Jesus knew of this lack. He knew of this deprivation, this dry land. That is why he had a master plan. Train 12 disciples, teach them, sit with them, eat with them, talk with them, train them all for the purpose of making other disciples. Most of his three years was dedicated to their training, their learning and development as disciples. Church family, we have done some great work, and we will continue in it. However, the work and mandate of the kingdom is to make disciples. Many have noticed that just prior to COVID and Post-COVID, when you frequent a restaurant or eatery, they do not automatically serve you water anymore. Water, which is now optional, was a normal part of the experience. Whether a person is suffering from natural or spiritual dehydration, they can experience confusion, disorientation, delusion, or unhealthiness. And if left untreated, death. We see this all the time on the news, in the paper, on the internet, while we're driving, shopping, or eating. How many times have you said, have I said, after watching TV or reading the paper or forming through Facebook or on social media, I can't believe they did that. He did that. She did that. What is the world coming to? How can someone hurt their own child or kill their spouse? Why didn't they talk to someone? They could have gotten help. See, physical or spiritual dehydration is no respecter of person, age, gender, or race. In Matthew 28, 18, 20, Jesus says, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you. Not the church, not the pastor, not the servant leaders, but given you. And be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. See, our job is to get people to recognize their need for Jesus, the living water. We can do that by just showing some of them the benefits we have experienced, like restored bodies, healed bodies, healthy bodies, peaceful bodies. We are responsible for sharing with them that the benefit can be more than delicious. It can be divine, more than gratifying, but sanctifying, more than satisfying, but saving. When the woman at the well was told about her dehydration, she believed the authenticity of the water Jesus was offering because she believed in the authenticity of the person sharing or offering it. And guess what? Jesus didn't call on Jacob, the owner of the well, to get an accommodation, a recommendation, a referral, or suggestions on how to share what he had to offer. 
Just like we don't call Azarka, Dasani, and Smartwater to check the authenticity of their product. Why? Because personal experience has made you a believer. You know, water. When I was young, you know, that space where I thought I had all the answers, that I had everything going for me, that I had everything I needed. I would drink only what I believe I needed. Sometimes that was a mere swallow. Sometimes it was a gulp. And sometimes I just kind of let the water sit there. And I would walk by it. I'd walk around it. And sometimes I would move it out of my way. But you know, now that I'm old, I understand a little better. See, I understand that this water was created for me that it had me in mind, that it is for my benefit. But like all things, whether natural or spiritual, it is mine to receive or reject. When believers feel the mandate to go, we are simply offering what we have experienced. See, I can't tell you about something that I haven't experienced. I can't give you an eyewitness account to something I didn't see. I can't explain what I don't know, and I surely can't give you what I don't have. Saints, there is no great commission without the gospel of the kingdom of God. If Jesus refers to it 90 times in his ministry, I would beg to say it should be at the top of our priority list. Everything Jesus said or did was about the kingdom of God. There was a writer, Edward Schweizer, says, discipleship is the only form in which faith can exist. Question, what is faith without a follower and a follower without faith? I love how Jesus ends the Great Commission with a promise, a great promise. Matthew 18, 20. Jesus just didn't give us a command. He followed that command with a promise. See, we live in days. We do not know what a day may bring. We all realize that truth on March 12, 2020. There are days of confident faith and days of doubt. There are days when the birth of a child brings joy and days when the death of a loved one brings sorrow. There are days of peace and days of unrest. There are days when life is good and days when simply life sucks. Yet the promise, the heavenly contract is, all the days Christ is with us. I have a question for you. What about the people who are still thirsty? What do they have? Who is with them? This bottle of water will hopefully help us understand that our plight is fishermen of men. We all handle it differently. You know, some people hold it in the left. Some people hold it in the right. We consume it differently. Some people like it in the bottle. Some people like it in the glass. Some people savor it differently and acquire it differently. Some people get theirs online. Some people get theirs at the store. Yet the truth remains the same. If only you get the benefit, what good? is it for the world? People will subconsciously and consciously reject, deny, refuse, delay the offer of Jesus Christ. 
It is our responsibilities as fishers of men to continue to cast our hooks out into the waters of life, regardless how many times it comes back empty. Remember, we can delay the consumption of water, but we cannot deny the need for it. Guess what? Neither can they. Because one way or the other, we will all suffer the consequences for the lack of it. Question. Would you withhold this water from someone who is dying because you didn't want to go through the trouble of sharing it with them or open it for them? Would you think that someone else is going to come along and give them a drink? Or would you think that the water you hold in your hand is not good enough or not as good as someone else's? Well, let's see. Look around you. Is your water a different color? Is your water a better grade than someone else's? Will it taste differently? Do you have to open it differently? You may have paid more for it or less for it, but the value remains the same. Yet we feel or think ours is not as powerful or beneficial as someone else's, so we drink it alone or in silence or selfishly. As you hold your water like I hold my water in my hand, I want you to consider how good how satisfying and refreshing it would be to someone who is thirsty or dehydrated. I also want you to consider what happens when you and I fail to share living water with others and fail to give them what could have saved them, restored them, healed them, washed them, and delivered them spiritually. See, the only difference between your water and my water, his water, her water, is simply how we share it. I may share mine on ice under a tree. You may share yours at a dinner table. She may share hers at work. He may share his on the basketball court. However we decide to share it, one thing remains the same. The benefits are eternal. One day, a lady criticized D.L. Moody for his methods of evangelism in attempting to win people to the Lord. And Moody's reply was, I agree with you. I don't like the way I do it either. But tell me, how do you do it? The lady replied, I don't do it. Moody retorted, then I like my way of doing it better than your way of not doing it at all. We've all heard the Nike quote, just do it. Although the ad was considered cocky by some, disrespectful by a few, it has been considered one of the top five marketing slogans in athletic gear history. I believe one of the reasons this quote took off so rapidly or was a hit so quickly was because it spoke to more than one's athletic ability. See, people are drawn by the thought of doing something out of the box or their comfort zone. And I challenge you, I challenge myself this week to just do it. You never know what you might catch. Go fish. Go and make disciples for the kingdom. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. For those of you who are thirsty, those of you who have done just about everything you know to do to quench your thirst, for those who are like David when he said in Psalms 42, 1 through 2, As the deer pants for the water brook, so pants my soul for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before you? Or Psalms 63, 1, O God, you are my God. Early, early will I seek you. 
My soul thirsts for you. My flesh longs for you in a dry and a thirsty land where there is no water. Today, I want you to know that Jesus is sitting at the well, at the well of your life. Not to offer you what is temporal or what man can, but only what he can. Living water to satisfy your thirsting soul. If that is you today, if you would like to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior and be revived again, receive life now and for eternity, then I ask you to repeat after me. Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I am a sinner and I ask for your forgiveness. I believe you died for my sins and rose from the dead. I turn from my sins and I invite you to come into my heart and my life. I want to trust and follow you as my Lord and Savior. If you prayed that prayer for the first time, we rejoice with the angels in heaven. And we would also like to connect with you and be in community. Just click the button below. If you are looking for a community to join and grow with, we would love to have you. Just click the button below. We would also like to invite you to Fellowship Hall, where we gather online to discuss the word that has gone forth and encourage one another, and simply fellowship. To join us, click the button below immediately following the benediction. Family, I pray that you have decided to take the water challenge, to drink as much as needed, and to share that others may drink as well. Receive this benediction. May it be well with you. And may you be a part of the world's healing and deliverance this day. And may the blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day. In Jesus' name, amen. See you in the fellowship hall.